Hey, Kooky. Hey, mate. Uh, I know I got a bit fired up this week, uh, and, uh, and I know you are too. I, yeah. I got your text um, yeah. during the week, which said uh, you're not going to hold back today, and nor am I. Uh, it's time that we uh, actually had to. We have to be really honest. Okay, yeah. let's let's be honest about what's going on. Let's well, let's let's at least talk about how we think based on data and how we feel based on anecdotal stuff yep. about what's going on out there in the economy versus what our fearless treasurer is saying and, you know, we've got an election coming up so let's get it right, and versus what our RBA governor is saying. Uh, now, yep. so let's start with Tuesday's statement. Yep. What do you, what do you want to call out? And it was followed up by the Reserve Bank's, they've got a chief economist now, Sarah Hunter, who came from the, from the money markets, really smart, great economist. And she was appearing before the Senate yesterday. So I'm going to preface my answer to, to a yep. discussion. It was yesterday, I think she, she was speaking. And quote, unquote, she said, the economy is running hot. Oh, but that is ridiculous. And that's why they've got the tightening bias on interest rates. That's why they didn't pull the trigger, but when Michelle Bullock gave the RBA governor, gave her press conference on Tuesday afternoon, she was sort of saying, oh, well, look, we thought about hiking rates. We didn't do it, but we thought about it. Now, to get to the nitty-gritty of your opening comment and question, when I go through, and we'll do the checklist later, but I go through just the, the, the core data on the economy, like where's the economy? You know, the GDP numbers are really weak. Uh, even the RBA's own forecast, when we get the June quarter numbers, annual, not quarterly, annual GDP will be 0.9%. Right, so, and it was annual. running 1.1, 1 .1, so we're down. So we're down another bit. Yep. Yes, down again. Which and is by the way, that's crazy. the population growth at 2.5%. So per capita, we're about minus 1.5% approximately. Yeah, which is not good, minus 1.5%. No, 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 no. That hasn't happened outside that little period of the pandemic, which was, of course, a, a strange time for the economy or economic data, we've got to go back to the early 1990s recession mark mm. to see that sort of there are a lot of correlations. GDP, you know, that's weak. We have a lot of correlations at the moment, Steve, back to the 1990s. Oh, indeed. And we all know what happened. That was the recession we had to have, which is, which is Paul Keating. Oh. Whatever we yep. say about Paul Keating, <laughs> he was always honest. Oh, yes, he was, yes. And he might, he, maybe he shouldn't have said it. And today the... The PR boffins are never going to let our Reserve Bank governor say everything. And as you know, no, that they no. now have PR boffins all over the joint. Indeed, everything indeed. is structured. So and and, and they rehearse everything they say before they say it in public. Yes, and before it's sent out, what out? Yep. This, it's all looked at. Okay, yep. so but Keating said this is a recession we had to have, and he is correct because ultimately we needed to go into recession to control inflation to the level they wanted it at. And that's, yes, but we had had a decade of really high inflation. We've only had a blip. You know, when you actually look at that long run chart, yes, inflation was a huge problem 18 months ago. It's coming down. And this is, again, the other part of the reserve. It's half of what it was, or less than half of what it's it was. less than what it half was. And it's still heading down. You know, yeah. This is the interesting thing about this whole thing. So uh, a weak economy... I'll use the linkages. This is Economics 101, and I, I'm sure everybody listening to this can understand it. No, that's not being patronising. It's just being a fact. When the economy slows down, which it is, like slows down a lot, what happens to the business sector? They say, oh, no one's coming into my shop. No one's uh, using my transport. They're not delivering as many goods because people are cutting back on their spending. Therefore, I don't need to hire as many people. Therefore, the unemployment rate goes up. Therefore, when you lose your job, you earn no income by definition. You might have been earning money doing whatever you're doing. You're unemployed, you earn nothing. So you stop spending. So you get this circularity in the economy where the initial weakening in, in GDP, in the economy, feeds through into a higher unemployment, feeds into lower spending, feeds into even weaker economic activity. And we're in the middle of that cycle now. It hasn't come to an end. And that's the thing that concerns me and got me a little bit hot under the collar earlier this week, that we have not got to the end of that cycle. Unemployment's gone up yet from 35 to 4.1%, so it's moving higher uh, and because we know job ads are down 27%. So firms are not hiring anymore. They've cut back their hiring. And if you don't hire, you don't get a job, you don't get a job, you don't earn income, you're not adding to output when you're working because when you're working, you're adding to economic activity. Uh, and that's where I see significant, if not huge, downside risks to the economy in the second half of 2024 and probably into 2025 as well. Okay, so what, a couple of things. She, she's very careful not to criticise anybody in her yep. statement, yep. which is fair. Yep. Um, but 
you can draw you can you can draw interpretations out of what she says. Let's just look at unemployment for a second, and also let's let's you and I just talk for a moment about the whole concept of recession. Generally speaking, we talk about two negative quarters in a row. You know, we have a technical recession, but I reckon that doesn't really mean anything. I don't think that really bothers anyone too much. If you couple that with unemployment, though, a high rate of unemployment, yeah. then then that start we're starting to talk about stuff now. Yeah. If I look at the US, no, no, it's not, sorry. If I put park the US, if I look at Europe, Canada, and UK, yep, the unemployment numbers have a six in front of them, yep, right now, yep, a six, six, and fours, they were six. in the fours uh, not long ago. Yep, are, are we are we driving an impossible outcome by even considering that unemployment with a four in front of it is possible given where interest rates are right now. I mean, and yeah, we know yeah, who yeah. Nehru is. We know yeah, what a, yeah, yeah. a non-accelerating yes. inflation rate of unemployment is. It's yeah. 4.5. Yeah. But are we are we delusional? I think I think not because uh, one, one of the benefits from the – pandemic and the post-pandemic period was this lowering the unemployment rate. You know, if you and I were recording this, say, 10 years ago, we would not have dreamt of the unemployment oh, rate. Oh, 3.3 or 3.5, whatever, whatever we got to. Yeah. No, let alone 4, mm. because it was, 5 was good. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was good. Now, uh, and in a way, it's a little bit like when Keating, going back to your earlier comment, you know, when we, the recession we had to have, he said that because it actually led to an unexpected fall in inflation. He was not for – he was not – you know, behind that recession to get inflation down. But it was one of the consequences. And when you get lucky in economics, you take advantage of it. We got lucky with the low unemployment rate. And certainly the government and, and most economists, you know, rightly, want to keep low unemployment. I know, but low I, 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 and I think we can. But because, you're saying we're lucky, mate. And I'm asking look, you, we've been delusional about that. <laughs> no, I mean, because, because, yeah, because yeah. if you look at, if, if, look, if, yeah, <laughs> Steve, if you look at unemployment in those places I just said to you, the reason they are dropping interest rates, Canada, uh, UK yep. and uh, ECB, but well, they just missed an interest rate drop, but they have yep. done one. Yep. Their inflation is really low. It's like mi- low to mid it, twos. It, it, it's come I mean, off I, dramatically. I, I'm just saying, like, is is the correlation between a much higher unemployment number and a much lower inflation number, which is what we had end up having in the nineties, <laughs> is that something that's unavoidable? I mean, because to, 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 to an extent it is, and indeed, that's why the RBA is not the RBA, unlike these other central banks in around the rest of the world, are not cutting interest rates, in fact, signaling they're not going to cut them because they are saying, and it came out in their forecast earlier this week, that the unemployment rate has still got to go up before they're content that they've got the big picture economic conditions in the right place to get inflation back to target. Okay, let me ask you, did she say that in her statement? Because she did. I think she said that. She made a comment about unemployment still too high. Yes. Uh, too, too, low. Too, too low. Yes, the labour market's too tight or yeah, whatever. They were which a word. Is, she didn't say what code. you were not. Yeah. It's code. <laughs> we, can, we can say it. Yeah, you know, well, and, and we are saying it. I'm going to call it out, <laughs> yep. you know, and that, uh, in relation to her statement, I, we, you and I have talked about this ad nauseum. Every yeah. meeting we talk about yeah. the 4.5% that she's already declared yeah. in their modelling that they did in June last year, yeah. and it may well be revised. It could be higher for that matter. It could be five. I don't know. She hasn't told us. Wish she would tell us. Come out and tell us. Please, Governor, tell us. What is the unemployment number you think is the appropriate number for us, you think modelling, will get us to the inflation number that you're telling us we have? You're telling us we have 2 or 3%? Right, what do you reckon unemployment is going to end up at? Where do you think it's going to go? I'm worried we're heading towards 5%. Me too. We're already at 4.1, and as I mentioned just a minute ago, you look at the job ads. Earlier this week we saw the Seek job advertisement series, you know, the Seek, the yeah, yeah. people, that they, they – monitor the number of ads that you and I put on there when we need to hire people. If, if our economy and our business is weak, we don't need to hire anyone. Yeah. So you don't put an ad on there. Falling, it fell another 3% in the month. Like 3% in a month is a big monthly fall. And as I mentioned, the job vacancy series are down 27%. Well, how is like, that a hot economy? <sighs> I don't know. It's not a word I would use because with weak GDP, rising unemployment, they're the symptoms of a weak economy. Well, is there some part of the economy that is hot though? Is there some? Oh, the areas that the RBA governor spoke about and was in their quarterly statement on monetary policy, that big detailed document, you can have a look at their yep. website for that, uh, did talk about uh, areas of government demand. The government okay, sector. Let's, let's talk about okay, this. Yep. Yeah is the one where there's momentum. And 
What are we talking? What do you mean by that? Government though? demand. What do they mean about government demand? There are three or four aspects to that at the moment, which are which are strong. Hiring for healthcare, aged care, mental health care. In other words, public servants. Public servants, yes. So the government's commitment to have a nurse in every aged care facility twenty four seven, like it's a good thing. I think. I think good. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, need no, to, we need to spend some of this money on education and healthcare. However. It's money going into the economy, so that's one aspect that. So is, look, let's is just wind robust. it back a bit, Steve. Like, yep. let's just wind, what that yeah. means is that government <clears throat> is employing, wants to employ, and is employing more people in New South Wales. The New South Wales Police Force yep. is paying thirty thousand dollars for policemen to come and be educated in yep. the in the police program. So that th- those things are stimulatory. Yes, it's money going into the economy. It's getting and, someone a job who didn't have a and job. It's not coming from before. you and I or independent yeah. contractors. It's coming yeah. from the government purse. It's coming from our taxes. Eff- effectively, yes, yes, correct. So and, and so that is part. And in fact, the jobs numbers. Someone I can't recall. I get so much economic information. It wasn't me, but I saw someone sort of uh, what do we call it? Disaggregate those labour market numbers. And I think the conclusion was, if I remember correctly, about three quarters of all the job creation in the past year was for jobs like. Uh, police, teachers, nurses, aged care workers, NDIS workers, and that related part of the economy. Now, as I said, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, on the contrary, we need some of that. You know, there's, yes. But it is an economic issue. It is stimulatory. It is. It's putting money into the economy that would not be there if we didn't hire more police, more nurses. So is that the part of the economy that's going hot? Going hot. Um, is that what it, she it's, means? It's, Was she having a backhanded uh, go at the, at the government spending, both at state and federal level? I think it was, yes. I think she couldn't say it, of course. She's got to be independent. So, But I think if you actually analysed and read between the lines. Why doesn't someone ask you the question? Uh, excuse me, what, what is uh, what, She's the he- chief economist or something. Uh, uh, excuse uh, me, what's Sarah, her name again? Sarah Hunter. Excuse Sarah. me, Miss Hunter. Could you please explain which parts yeah. of the economy are running hot? Yeah, I don't think they did. I'd love to ask that question. Oh, me too. I look at the numbers myself. You know, you know me, Mark, we look at these numbers all the time. And when it's hot, you say it. When it's not you say it. You know, you call the cycle. See, there's still a business cycle. The other area where they mentioned, by the way, too, and this is this is important, um, was a uh, work yet to be done in infrastructure spending. Mm. There's a lot of stuff in the proverbial pipeline, as they say. So governments, and this is more a state one than a federal one, just by the way, a lot of the state governments are sort of ramping up their infrastructure spend. They haven't spent the money yet but they, they want to. And you know, a lot of it's public transport and, again, worthy things. You know, Everyone wants good trains and roads and all this sort of stuff. But, again, that's money going into the economy. And, you know, some governments have postponed those things, particularly in Victoria yep. where there's a real pressure on their budget. Their budget's – how can I put this politely? Dog shit. Dog shit. I was going to be polite, Mark, but I, I, I'll take it that. Is. And so that's why they stopped – they abandoned the Commonwealth Games, which would have cost them a few billion bucks. Some of these rail and road networks, they've postponed them out three, four, five years, waiting for the economy to improve. Uh, but nonetheless, there's still other state governments. But on the flip um, side, Queensland's gone the other way. And Queensland, well, they've got an election in a couple this of year. months. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so their uh, government's sort of... Mate, they're spending money like drunken throw, sailors. Throwing money around like, yeah, crazy cats. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So if I just go back <laughs> for a second, so the, the parts of the, the economy that are running hot, uh, not only the, are the employment of more people into the public sector, that is to do the, the things that, you know, we all think are great ideas. Yep, yep. yep. I would say that some of that needs to be moderated, but nonetheless, sure. um, the idea doesn't need to be abandoned. But we need to say, well, we can't do that yet until we get 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 more money into the system or things recover. Maybe that's 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 a that's my own personal view. But it doesn't matter. So the second one you're saying is in capital expenditure by governments in terms of a net a, a infrastructure, for example. Correct. Yes, infrastructure. Are there any other parts of the economy that are running hot? I go through uh, the retail sector. No, dreadful. Dwelling construction. Dreadful. Weak. Uh, I look through things like the export sector. Okay, that's I wouldn't say it's running hot, but we know that commodity prices are down. But you know, and let's look at uh, the big share price of BHP, Rio, Fortescue. They're all down. They're not bad, but that's that momentum that was a positive is now neutral. So then you look at things like uh, you know, car sales. They've topped out a little. Wait, wait, wait! I was talking to car dealers like, uh, uh, okay, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're one hundred percent right. Said to me, yeah, that. As opposed to during the COVID period and just post-COVID when they had demand, massive demand, but they couldn't even supply because they couldn't get the uh, supply, but they were taking the money day one. 
they had a, a massive period. Yeah. Now, manufacturers are caught up. Yeah. And the uh, manufacturers uh, say to the dealers, "You got to take so many cars. Yeah. You're committed to take and so many cars." They're not They're sitting on our showroom. So floor. They're, they're, yeah. they're correct, yeah. and they're paying paying for floor plan interest to the yeah. lenders. Yes. And uh, but they're not selling them. And so that area is, and that's a big t- ticket item too, Huge. Like, like housing, that's Huge. A big ticket items. And, and in fact, that's a, another weak part. Things like hospitalities and uh, restaurants, cafes, people sort of say, oh, look, I go to a cafe and it's pretty busy. I go to a restaurant for dinner and it's you know, pretty busy. That's half true, but the but there is, if you look, dig down into the retail spending numbers, which do break down those numbers into into cafes, restaurants and all that other stuff, they're very weak. Things like well, bars can you correlate and, that back to and, and alcohol sales, you know, and again, maybe that's because we're healthier or something, we're drinking less booze or something. But again, you know, spending 15 bucks on a beer and 30 bucks on a bottle of wine, yeah, that's a lot of money and when you're struggling with your mortgage repayments. Retail sales, take us back to a period when we've never been, we've never seen retail sales so low. I hate to say it, early 90s recession. Correct. So you know, we're getting a lot of correlations We're, we're here. getting back to that period where, we, and you know, we, we know this, Mark. You and I talk to everyday people every day, the proverbial mums and dads, if you like. Uh, consumers are not silly. You know, they're savvy. They're smart. They know about their money. They know exactly how much money's come in, how much money's going out, so that when they get pressure on their essential spending, their rent is the most obvious one. Their mortgage repayments are the other one. Those two items, you know, you must pay them. You've got to have your roof over your head and you'll cut back spending everywhere else to make your mortgage repayments to pay your rent. And that can be extremely painful. Australians so, definitely do that. And Australians definitely do, yes. We, you know, and you look at some of the surveys, what's the last thing you'll not pay my mortgage, yep. I'll, I'll defer my utilities bill, my phone bill, I'll let that go over time Run a the credit bit. card. Run up the credit card a bit more, but I'm going to make my mortgage repayment, I'm going to pay my rent because I, you know, that's part of my um, my financial strategy. It's an Australian psyche too. It is. And so when you sort of cut through all of these things and and even uh, and one other way, this one of my ways of analysing the economy is not me analysing the economy and then look at what's happening in markets is look at what markets are telling me about the economy. So Coles and Woolworths, they're both on the Australian Stock stock Exchange, right? Huge retailers, you know, we, and we've had that inquiry into price gouging and all that stuff a few months ago, whatever. If those companies were making tonnes of money, their share price would be going up, pretty simple. If they weren't making money, their share price would be weak, like if they were under some sort of pressure. Everyone go and have a look at the Woolies and the Coles share price over the last couple of years even, and, you know, there's been a bit of volatility around COVID again. So put that aside because that was a really weird period. But basically, Coles and Woolies' share price is really weak. Why are Coles and Woolworths, allegedly with this, you know, near uh, duopoly power in retailing and groceries, why aren't they making money? Because when you and I and all the listeners go to Coles and Woolies, look, we're still buying our food. We have to. We're still buying our washing powder. We're buying our fruit and veggies and our meat and all this other stuff. But we're not spending as much as we used to. We're probably not buying the luxury things. Or we're not buying as much. We're buying this. We're not buying the chocolate bar. We're not buying the ice creams. Look, we won't do it this week. We're still at a $120 budget. Yeah, for, for the week, we're if you're spending one hundred and twenty dollars. We're walking away with a lot less. With a lot less, correct, correct. Or, or in fact, because our mortgage payments go up, we can only spend one hundred this week. Yeah. So when you're there, you sort of scout around for the for the bargains for the discounts. So again, so the price. Yeah, this might. Yeah, you know, we. I'm not a share market person. You know, that, I look at them, but I. You know, I'm not a share analyst. But when I look at Coles and Woolies price, and look at JB Hi-Fi, all the re- yeah. Harvey Norman. Look, look at the retailers on the stock exchange. You know, big companies, billion, multi-billion dollar companies. Spend a bit of time looking at what's happened to their share price. They're weak. They're not weak because of, oh, I don't know, uh, the economy's strong. They're weak because we're not spending as much. So if you go back and look at her statement, the, the statement before the inquiry, um, yep. whatever it was called, the Senate inquiry, whatever it was this yep. week, yep. and uh, and you look at the statement of the RBA governor, which would have been written by somebody else, but done nonetheless, which was released on Tuesday, um, when they talk about... Um, we, we just put a, a unemployment aside because we've already covered off unemployment. It's definitely not high enough from their point of view and, and relative to what's going on in the rest of the world where they are getting good inflation numbers, nice low inflation numbers n- near their sweet spot. Um, our unemployment numbers 
probably way too low relative to the unemployment numbers are overseas. We'd hate to see it get anywhere close to those, by the way. Um, I'm putting US, USA aside. Um, then if you uh, look at what she's saying is relates to HOT. HOT talks about government expenditure, both on uh, wages and or government uh, capital expenditure. Um, if you look at, um, you know, she said, I'm not really interested in what happens in the stock market. She, well, I, no, and I actually think that I, I really didn't like that, what she said there, because whilst I understand what she's saying, that the stock market in the USA and in, therefore in Japan reacted to that the, it was a, a three-month average of a half a percent was higher than the lowest unemployment number for the year, for the preceding period, which yes. is, and that was, that, there's some rule, I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember the name of the rule. Whatever either. name of the woman is. She, she was Sham next, or Salam some, or Sam or something Sam, like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's a rule. They say there is, and by the way, they're not saying it causes recessions. They're saying it's correlated to recessions. Yeah. And as a result of the whole market, you know, crapped itself. and We, we had got, that huge volatility and, in the yeah, stock market a week and ago. And everybody was saying, well, you know, RBA, yeah. you know, the, the commentators are saying, oh, media, look, RBA, you've got to have to reduce rates or start talking about reducing rates, et cetera. Yeah, you know, what she said, in my view, was cute. She said, no, I don't react to asset classes like yeah. share. Yeah. But what you're saying is something different. Yes, but hang on. There may well have, uh, you, there may well have been a little crash for the day. It may well have been a little recovery the next couple of days. And I get it. Let's not overreact to what s- silly little things are going on in the world. But please, please, please don't treat us like like idiots. Yep. What Kooky's saying is correct. The major retailers are going backwards in terms of share price, and it's more that long run stuff. Yeah, day to day volatility, and I agree. You know, stock markets can go up two percent. You think, oh great, they go down three percent. Think, oh damn it, I've lost some money. It's really this long run. What's trend. happening in the long run? So, what did if if you bought Woolies and Coal shares five years ago? Sure, you've collected a few dividends, or whatever, but the capital value of those shares is down. Yeah, it's actually down, and that and that is that, and is, that is there's a reason for that. Mark. That informs us of something. That yes. tells us that people it's are spending not less. Volatility, fine, I agree with you. Yeah, that, whatever, I agree but with you. But do you think that was a bit cute then by not addressing that? Like, I mean, we're addressing it uh, here. We're not yeah. the RBA, but we're addressing yeah. it. You and I, to me, Look, it's fundamental. You can get caught up in day to day volatility in markets. However, I think that was we, a PR we, thing. I think it's yeah. a PR people saying, "Listen, you need to say <laughs> yeah. we are not going to react." Because you'll add to the volatility. Yes. So if the RBA governor panics, then of course, oh my God, the, then the markets panic. They've got to they've got to be calm, and that and that's around the world. That's all central banks. They don't yeah. like to throw fuel on the fire of market volatility. In fact, they try to calm it down. Well, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> we don't want to throw fuel on market volatility. We're not going to. We don't respond to something like that that's happening in a particular asset classes outside yeah. of our mandate. Yeah. But. One of the things we do recognise, instead yeah, of saying yeah. the economy's hot, we do. We, they can yeah, say, "Look, well, the economy's hot in these areas," yeah. but we also notice that the economy is very weak. She did sort of make a, a, a some reference to this, but it's yeah. it's very weak. It's, it's not just weak, mate. It's very weak yeah. in relation to retail sales. Yeah. It, it, and those and household re- consumption uh, and those retail sales numbers that have come out and, and again I agree with you on household consumption that they they are as weak as water you know yeah. they they're, they're chronically weak. The other thing which talking about asset prices and they have actually mentioned this it's not in their mandate something dear to our hearts house prices yeah they don't target house prices however they do talk about it they talk about it a lot as it if it's a, as if it's actually causing a problem because it is a factor that feeds into our wealth effect as homeowners. It feed, and feeds into the bank's balance sheet because they you know, banks don't want house prices to crash because, of course, that would be catastrophic for them, you know. Um, but we don't want house prices to go up 20% in a year either because that's, that's volatility again. That's crazy. We, we want house prices to grind higher over time and that's a sensible, sound thing for it to happen. However, the Reserve Bank noted, note house prices indeed. It wasn't in this week's statement, but earlier this year, the RBA put, and Michelle Bullock, the governor, said several times house prices were an issue they were looking at. It adds to household wealth when house prices go up. And when we're feeling wealthier, we spend more. And well, that's well, a reason why consumption will be strong. Well, okay, mate, well, if that's correct, yeah. I accept that. That's yeah. probably right. Yeah. Therefore, when people stop spending money at Woolworths and Coles, yeah. Why don't we get the flip side argument? Well, and yeah. therefore, people won't, don't feel wealthy, and they and they start to reduce their spending. Yep, yeah. I'm I'm on the same page as you, Mark. Oh, I think, I, and that and that's the issue that the the RBA is playing with fire. And just as another aside, you know, and I I don't mean to go back over the 2021 Doctor Lowe when he was governor, no rate hikes for three years. But I remember, and I was actually looking at this earlier uh, yesterday because I was just sort of, what what did they do back then? In late 2021. 
inflation spiked up. Again, it was seemingly, seemingly temporary. The markets, the bond market, the money markets were pricing in six or seven rate hikes. The RBA governor, Dr Lowe, came out and said, oh, no, we, we think this inflation is a blip. It's going to stay low. We're going to keep interest rates at 0.1% for the next three years. And money markets are wrong. Fast forward to today, the RBA governor said, we th- it's a 180 degree reversal. She said, oh, we think inflation is going to be persistent. It's not going to fall quickly. Oh, and she actually said 2026 before we get to yes, the range. Yes, before we get to the middle of the range. They've extended the period. Uh, yes, they put it out another six or 12 six, months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we uh, don't think inflation is coming down quickly, unlike every other country that you just mentioned before. We... And she was asked about, oh, markets are pricing in rate cuts before the end. Of, this was before her speech. Um, uh, by the end of 2024, they were pricing in a 25-point cut by December. She said, the markets are wrong. That's you know? scary. And that worries me because having worked in markets and speak to people in markets every day, uh, money markets are driven by people investing billions of dollars in government With bonds. With all the information. With, and they're smart people. And yeah. they're sitting not just in Sydney and Melbourne, they're sitting in Frankfurt, Tokyo, New York. Global investors buy the Australian bond market. And so I'm thinking, and this is not meant to be a rude comment about the RBA, who are full of PhD economists, absolutely smarter economists than I'd ever dream I could be. But the weight of money is telling me something that the RBA doesn't get. So Dr. Lowe made the mistake three years ago, markets are wrong. Their pricing rate hikes, no, we, we know better. We're the RBA and our models are telling us that inflation is not going to go up. Now there's enough of the market saying inflation's coming down. RBA, the inflation rate's coming down. Yeah, oh, look, we might want it to be there tomorrow rather than in six months, but I think their inflation forecasts are wrong, just like they were three years ago. And to say the money markets are wrong, and even despite what she said, Mark, I was looking at the curve this morning before I came in to record this, the chances of a rate hike according to our futures market is a big fat zero. We are still pricing in a rate cut, but not until February, but the cut is still there and a couple more cuts after that are in the, in the money markets. So the money markets have said to the RBA governor, you're wrong. Boy, and and, and <laughs> well, that's 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 probably quite a critical point, and that's the tension. Who yes. has who has the most? I mean, <laughs> and not, I don't, it's not to our credibility, but yeah, obviously the Reserve Bank has no credibility relative to the money market. The money market is just ignoring what she's gone gone and said. But these things, generally speaking, aren't some individual sitting there making a decision. These are quantitatively um, derived. And, and usually software makes a decision, so to speak. It gets yep. overlooked, but uh, 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 I'm sorry, there is oversight, but it get, the software just spits out what the data says. Correct. And so, that leads to the trading, the uh, what uh, the automatic trading. Yeah, as well, yeah. And as well, there's humans that are involved too. Yeah. Sort of say, oh. and, and again, the other thing, Mark, and this is the sort of fascinating thing about uh, money markets, why I absolutely love them, <laughs> and, uh, is that, as I said, there are investors sitting in, I'll just make this up, in Boston or in Frankfurt or in Tokyo. Canada, say, where you used to work. Or Canada, yeah. Toronto say, Dominion, you used to work at TD, TD, yeah, Toronto Dominion. Yep. So they, and, they, and these investors have got billions of dollars and they're sitting there saying, will I put my money into Australia or the US or New Zealand or emerging markets or the UK or Greece Because they're looking Spain, for the best return. The best risk-weighted return. Yep. And when they see Australia versus every other market opportunity. Because they can put their money wherever they want. These are sort of big, heavy sort of players in, in global money markets. They say, oh, Australia's looking good. Gee, they're saying there's no rate cut. I don't believe it. I'm going to put my money there because I can see that high yield because the yields went up, I'll put my money there, and they collect extra yield. They make money from the RBA. I'll say making a mistake. <laughs> They'll make money from the RBA miscalling, let's say, yep. the outlook. And when the RBA, ch- if, sorry, the RBA change their mind in three months' time, they think, oh, my goodness, the economy's weaker than we thought. We didn't expect inflation to fall this quickly. Drop Therefore, the we're going to cut rates. They make money. Those investors make a truckload of cash. Okay, so, so you and I know the bloke really well. <laughs> Um, and he was on live via before the RBA met this week. Chris Joy, okay. Now, uh, he's, and, and it's his game. And, and it's his game, and he's a smart fellow, Mark. This, he's, a, he's the smartest markets person. 
Probably in the country. One of the smartest market people doing the rounds. And, indeed, and you're mode. right. And he's, by the way, one of the people you're talking about. He's one of the people who oh. invests billions of dollars oh, in, does, in, yes. in the bond market. In his okay? fund, yes. That's his game, okay? And he's got a number of funds. And he's and, and I look at their returns because my brother's son is his head of ops. There you go. <laughs> and I find out what's going on. And yeah. we as a family, we have money in there. So, sure. So, and we've done ridiculously well. Right. And what he does is that not only did he, does he buy the yield, but he sells the yield too. So, sure. so he buys it uh, at 6.5% and when the market go, when the Reserve Bank drops rates and the, the average rate being offered on a bond is, uh, I don't know, 5, 5%, he just turns sell, sell, sells someone, would you like 6.5%? And, a uh, and, and makes he makes a capital, capital gain. gain. So yeah, he adds the yeah, capital gain yeah, to the yeah. other yield and all of a sudden he, he pushes and yield. And up the total return to the The investor. return's ridiculously yeah. good, yeah. okay? Return, yeah. Now, I'm telling you now, he is calling a recession. Yeah. And, and a hard landing. Too. And, and rate hikes and a recession because yeah. of it, yes. Yeah. And he's calling it. Now, you've got to think this, if we've got to think about this, and oh. Chris is talking his own book. Because sure, of, that's fine. You know, yeah, we all, well, because we all he's, a, he's a, a private guy. Yeah. He can yeah. call his own book. He can do whatever he, he wants. Talk his own yes. book. Good on him. But yeah. he is saying that we are in trouble. On that, I agree with him completely. We've had a difference of view on on uh, house prices and the other bits and bobs. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. We've moved on. I'm worried now that the RBA's stubbornness, let's call it. Not rate hikes, but just stubbornness. Yeah, yeah. But just not acknowledging the risks to the economy and even signaling that, yeah, look, we might cut if the economy is really weak. Or indeed, saying that the economy is running hot. Well, and we might, and by the way, and we might put rates up. And so if, but from that perspective, and as we said at the beginning, GDP growth in the June quarter will be under one, annual, under 1%. That's within a, you know, the proverbial bee's whisker from being into a recession. And in for, and again, without getting into the technicalities of what's a recession, two quarters of negative GDP, it'll feel like a recession for so many businesses. And I'm I'm not, and again, even though Coles and Woolies share prices are doing well, whatever, I don't worry so much about them. I worry about the smaller medium business operator that's not on the stock exchange, that employs 10 people, that needs activity. To well, actually employs 70% of the economy. Or, yeah, yeah, but there's... Million, literally millions of them. Yep. They employ five people, two people, ten yeah, people, yeah. sole operators, whatever. Yep. They're the ones that are going to be under the, the the pump, under the pressure because of no one coming in to buy the stuff from them. They've inevitably got overdrafts and probably a mortgage on the house that they live in. So both combination of personal plus small, medium business finance. Uh, they're the ones that are under the pump. So Chris's view on a hard landing um, – Maybe, I agree with it. Maybe uh, for slightly uh, different uh, reasons. Sli- we probably get to the same point from a slightly different uh, path. Yeah, yeah. But the end point, I'm worried that in the middle of next year, let's say, you know, 12, less, less than 12 months now, uh, if the RBA has not embraced what the markets are saying in cut interest rates, that our that their forecast that they put out earlier this week for GDP growth to be okay for unemployment to top at 4.4, not get to 5%, will be wrong. And they'll have to quickly revisit that sort of scenario. And I'm not prepared to forecast this, but we know that when that happens, that's when they cut 50 points at a time. You know, like, again, going back to earlier comment about Phil Lowe, they hiked, I can't remember how many 50-point hikes. They realised they were behind the curve, 50, 50, 50, 50, four meetings in a row because they knew they were behind the curve. Will we see a repeat of that come you know, early 2025? They say, oh, my goodness, the economy's weaker. Inflation, wow, that's nice and low. We'll have to go for a couple of 50s to get to get the stimulus into the economy. Do you think that, uh, you know, there's personality involved in this stuff. Um, do you think there's a an air that we are the RBA, yeah. you, the media, don't tell us what to do. The media is out there calling out you know, rate reductions um, yeah. off the back of what happened on, on in the, in terms of the stock market. The moves out there talking about uh, rate reductions off the back of money markets, what the money markets are yeah. predicting. Um, do you think there's an air of you don't tell us what to do? We're the RBA. We're in charge of this. It just, I just felt that. I, 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 or is and I don't know. I don't know a personality, but yeah. And it's dangerous because that's sort of what, as you said, Lowe's Phil Lowe did. His, his I think self. it was worse under. Dr. Lowe yep. was more closed shop, we know best, and we don't listen to any outside views. One thing that Michelle Bullock has done, and I know Andrew Hauser, the new deputy governor's come in, is ramp up even more their, what do they call it, the business liaison. Yep. They do listen to what business is saying. They do go out there, and this is sort of the, I think this is where we're in that grey area where business is saying things are crook and they've got this other analysis that their model, you know, the very smart people who run these economic models of the whole Australian economy are spitting out all these numbers and things where there's this conflict between 
I think the feedback is, yeah, the economy's weak, retail's weak and all these things that we've already discussed. Uh, I think they are much more open today than they were a couple of years ago. So you just and they're open to views. So they, they will listen to, uh, and again, it's maybe I think this is where uh, my understanding that the Deputy Governor, Andrew Hauser, his role is to go out there. He doesn't have quite the profile of the Governor, of course, because he's only the Deputy. Um, but his role is to go out there and seek opinions. And he actually said something a month or two ago. He said he wants to hear from everybody in the market. I think he even said some words to the effect slightly misquoted, I even want to hear from the crazy guy in the corner of the room who's calling rate cuts, rate hikes. I want to hear all opinions when I make my assessment on the economy. He so wants to how hear does from he the, feed into her? I mean, how's well, that? Well, he's on the board. The yep. deputy governor's on the board yep. and from what I can gather, look, I don't know the intimate workings of the RBA, I reckon they sit down and have a coffee every day, right, what do we, or you know, every week. What are you seeing? What's the numbers? What have you heard from this business? What did I saw... Let's just say I saw Chris Joy in the Fin Review the other day and he said something, what do you think of that? And I'll say, yes, good, no, we disagree, we agree, whatever. And, of course, this is this issue. This is why we have this fantastic discussion every month is that economics is an area where it is open to debate. If it was black and white, it would be so easy. Yeah. But this is – and there's different parts. The economy is so complex. Especially today. If you're talking to a retailer, you're talking to an exporter, you're talking to a builder, you're talking to a banker, you're talking to – an insolvency practitioner, they're probably doing okay at the moment, <laughs> heaven forbid. But, you know, so when you're the Reserve Bank, you've only got one interest rate or one instrument and that's your interest rate. And if you're hearing strong news from this sector, bad news, from the, you can't cut interest rates for retail and hike them for public servants, <laughs> if you know what I mean, or even on a state basis. You know, WA is booming, Tassie and Victoria are relatively weak at the moment. So in theory, yeah, WA could have a rate hike. But you'd need a rate cut in Victoria and Tassie already to say because they're the softest states at the moment. But, of course, we've got one interest rate for the whole country. And so you, that's where the RBA also has a, what do we call it, a difficulty. Or well, conflict. Balancing. Uh, conflict. It's a little bit like Eurozone because, of course, Eurozone's got, what, 27 countries? So Greece might be doing badly, Portugal badly, where Germany's strong. Well, it's not the case at the moment. It's actually going the other way. It's actually going the other way. Yeah. So should you be hiking for Germany, cutting for Greece? Yeah, or Cutting for Germany, hiking for Greece, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. yeah. But of course, they've only got one interest rate and one currency too. Of course, in the eurozone, a little bit like Australia with our six states and two ter- two territories. So well, okay. So when it comes to the reserve banks, not the decision making, but the decision, or prob- prob- probably where our discussion is going is how she explains her decision. Yeah. It may well be that on the balance of probabilities, as opposed to it yeah. being overwhelmingly. Um, uh, compelling, but on the balance of probabilities, we just think right now that we probably shouldn't put rates up or down um, because we do have a, a, a hot sector, which is you know the, the public sector. We also have some strong states and some weak states, um, and and as opposed to being, I, I just thought it was so hawkish the way she came out. I, I just felt as though it yeah. was, and I, I felt like, and I don't know, I wouldn't have a clue, but I felt like. It was written for her and I felt like somebody it, – it looked professional, like in terms of spin, uh, she, do, doctored. Yeah. Look, she to, – to, to, to counter that a little bit, she did say she's not ruling anything out. So when the, she did get a couple of questions from the press gang that were there, she did say that if things do turn out to be weaker, then we will cut rates. Yeah, our buy, she said, as we sit here today, this is she made this point quite well, I thought, when she was sort of talking about these things. As we sit here today, there are no, the board is saying, the Reserve Bank board is saying, there's no probability of a rate or very little probability of a rate cut. We're on hold. And there's a chance, just a chance, we might have to hike rates. So I don't think she expressed it very well though. Uh, and then she said, "Oh, we're not ruling anything or in or out because we will we will we will adapt to the evolving news on the economy." So, look, fair enough. In, in indeed, of course, we all do. We, we get more economic news coming through. So, the yeah, the the the, the what do we call it? The um, I think public the t- public facing of the RBA is a very difficult job. What do they say? How can they say it does matter? And again, like the market volatility of a week ago, uh, yeah, they don't want to come out and say, "Oh my God, we're worried about market volatility." That would just create even more panic in the markets. They've got to be the the uh, level, solid. Le- level-headed, solid, sober, you know, sensible people in the non-political. In the room. Non-political, yeah, they can't say Labor this, Liberal that, whatever. You know, they can't. Yeah, that's not their role. Their role is to use interest rates 
to manage the economy and with again, this is the other thing that was really interesting, Mark. And you, you were talking about her statement that yeah, the written um, press release that she yep. put out. Someone else pointed this out to me, and I did check it, and I think it's correct that in that statement, and this this will blow your mind, I reckon. The word inflation is this is only 700, 800 word document. Yep, inflation was mentioned twenty times, <laughs> unemployment once. Now. The reason why I think that's amazing is that, as we know, that review of the Reserve Bank that Treasurer Jim Chalmers put in place about a year ago, roughly. They changed the rules. The rules were meant to be roughly equal weighting to yep. the two to three inflation target yep. and unemployment. full employment, Unempl- low full, unemployment. Full, 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 employment, employment, yes. full employment measured yep. by unemployment. Yep, yep. And so, uh, when again, when I looked at that and thought, okay, we know inflation's coming down, maybe not as fast as we would like. Unemployment's going up. Why don't you focus as much on unemployment? Because I think she thinks unemployment is too low. Uh, you, I can't disagree with your assessment. And I and I think and I think she's you know she's borrowing what's going on overseas. Yep. She's saying I don't think she wants to get us to six or five and a half or whatever. But I think no. she want, definitely wants to get us at mid fours, maybe mid fours, bit, yep. maybe even a bit higher. Um, I, what hasn't been revealed is where she would like where they have modelled it to go. And this is not what she thinks is it's a modelling exercise. You know what is the yeah. unemployment number? In Australia, that takes the pressure off employers paying more wages, which creates cost push inflation, which results yep. in uh, vendors putting their prices up uh, relative to consumer demand, aggregate demand. Well, a wage price inflation spiral, as yes. it used to be called. Which it used to be, what yeah. are they now called? Cost push or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 and yeah. and, and, and <laughs> what's interesting, another thing that I thought I felt was really uh, quite interesting in, in the statement was, was the, t- the talk about. Strong demand. Yeah, there was. No, I, I actually don't no, they, know where that's coming they, from. They did say strong demand, so, and again, and a couple and, of occasions they said it. She yes. said it, and demand exceeding supply. Yeah, yeah. Words to that effect. Yeah. Um, yes, I was and, confused and, by and, that. And, and, I, I, and I, I look through their forecast because remember, at the back of their st- quarterly statement on their web page, they do have quite a detailed forecast um, table. You know, GDP, household consumption, business investment, exports, imports, blah, blah, blah. There's a whole list. It's really interesting for us economists to look at the building blocks for their forecasts, right? It's a bit like you and I when we discuss retail sales, housing. You know, they're, they're all building blocks to the economy. Looking through that, and then what, there's one thing called gross national expenditure, g e which is spending in the economy, not counting exports and imports. So the fact that we're exporting lots of iron ore and, you know, tourists, uh, yeah, tourists are coming, that's an export. You know, when we go overseas, it's an import. Yeah. yeah. So just domestic demand. So what are you and I spending and everybody's spending on business investment, retail spending, insurance premiums, all that stuff, farm output, you know, all that business that goes into the economy. It's actually pretty weak. It's growing by less than 2% going about one and a half percent. So that domestic strength, I couldn't see it. So would it be fair to say then that her written statement, which she released, was a lot more bullish or you know, let's call bullish in relation to interest rates not being reduced than yep. was her Q&A, her conference, press conference uh, and the numbers in the forecast. And the numbers num- in the forecast, if you sort of uh, had her comments and the hard numbers in the in the RBA's forecast, they didn't completely they didn't align. Match. No. So that's why I think... Because oh. if you just, again, if you said to me, ignoring all the commentary, and you said to most economists, I dare say, here's a forecast table, yeah, no commentary, and we've already had 425 basis points of rate hikes over the last two and a bit years... Uh, here's here's the here's the table. What do you think the next move in interest rates would be? Hmm. I reckon almost everyone would say they've got to come down because if you're forecasting unemployment up, inflation coming down, maybe not as fast as you'd like. Weak GDP, weak Genie. domestic demand, gross national expenditure. The export sector, by the way, the export sector is starting to weaken. 
because of lower commodity prices. And the world economy is weakening. You know, China, which we haven't discussed today, China's weak. The Se- US is weak. Se- 70% of our exports. It's extraordinary. It's an extraordinarily important part of our economy. You know, what happens in China is arguably much more important than happens in Canberra. Oh, 100%. <laughs> or down at Martin Place. Or in whatever. terms of GDP, in yes. In terms of the economy, or, yeah. or, or the impact of exports minus imports on GDP. Indeed. But for the domestic economy, which we, we can get, we or the Reserve Bank can control. You know, the Reserve Bank can't control China, can't control the US. Of course, of course, that's obvious. But it can control what you and I spend, what you and I invest, what the business person out there decides to hire more people or more CapEx or whatever the case may be. And that part of the economy, which they can they can influence, the Reserve Bank can influence, is the one where there's you know more holes on Swiss cheese. You know, it's sort of like really okay. Well, you problematic. okay? So if I if I said to you then. You know, you just you just pose a question. If you ask a whole lot of economists, giving them that data without looking at commentary, most of them would say there's an interest rate reduction. If you then went back to those same economists and said, "Look, given that data, there's not going to be an interest rate reduction until yeah. 2026, perhaps." Yeah. What do you think? That, what do you think is going? To, if you then said to those uh, economists, "What do you think is going to happen to the economy?" What do you reckon their response would be? Let's say it's going to be ongoing weak. So Chris Joy's point about uh, whether it's a recession, it'll be weak. You know, without getting to that. Cute definition of recessions and all that stuff. It'll be ongoing downward pressure to key parts of the economy. You know, interest rates do work. So know, what? So what will happen to unemployment? Too high for too. It goes up. And what will happen to GDP? Goes. It remains as weak as water. Yeah. It does. It doesn't get. You know, we it, we've had this conversation before. The three, 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 well, three point yeah, something. Yeah. You know, yeah, three percent GDP is sort of like a, a good. So that's, that's a sort actually of, very good. These it's days. not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, three's good if we could. You know, if we could wave our magic wand and get there. Three um, percent inflation is the top end of the band. Nice to get at two and a half, but yeah, three. And unemployment, well, three point something would be amazing. But even four, we might have to skew that to four point something. Not five. Five's too bloody high. Um, and because you know, each percentage point on unemployment is another couple of hundred thousand people. Yeah. Think about think about it in human terms. Unemployment, yeah. oh, 4.2, 4.4. Well, there's another 30,000 jobs that someone's lost. Someone's yeah. unemployed out there. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's that goes, a bad thing. It's bad yeah, for well, the economy. Well, because, it's bad for them, obviously, but it's bad for the well, economy. Well, I think also, too, Steve, like we, we, we've got to put all this bullshit data and everything aside <laughs> yeah. for a second. At the end of the day, yeah. as a country, yeah. as a nation, yeah. we want a good standard of living. Indeed and, we and do. If, yes. And that means... And, it, and by the way, their mandate is about growth, prosperity, and welfare, and welfare of the citizen, Australian citizens. Uh, yeah. Welfare. Yep. So that means w- they have to achieve something that covers everyone off. And for people to lose their jobs, yep, that's that, the worst. That falls right into the welfare category, as oh, far as I'm concerned. It, that's the worst thing you can do is not have a job. Yeah. yeah. And and I actually think what even into mental health issues as well as economic issues, social issues, it's a horrible thing. And I yeah, think what yeah, Chalmers yeah. did last year. I'll give you credit for this. Yep. Saying you, when it comes to welfare, one of the things you need to keep in mind is the unemployment number, or the oh, full employment. Agree, agree, hundred percent. And yes. Uh, yes. and I don't think either she's got another number in her head, which needs to she needs to hit in a modelling sense, and it's, uh, um, in order to achieve the inflation number she's trying to push push you know achieve. And maybe they're forgetting the big picture a little bit. Hang on a minute. That means people are going to lose their jobs. Now I don't. I probably don't mind if they get to four and a half percent, but I definitely yeah. mind if a, if they overshoot. If you get a five, and I'm yeah. worried, yeah. these things are inaccurate sciences. These models, uh, by definition, yeah. all models are wrong because you yeah. cannot put in every single variable. And, it's all about the assumptions. And the other thing, and you and I have discussed this for years, and we've observed it for years. Economies overshoot. Or, you, or, or undershoot. Or undershoot. Once they've got a moment, momentum in one direction, you know, so for example, a 25 point, even a hike or a cut today, it's not going to change the economy. Six months. For ages. Yep. And even then. So you need 100 points of cuts to actually, okay, shit, that's made a difference. I've, I, that's made a difference. 25, 25, 25. And that's why they tend to go in increments because they're never sure completely whether they've got it right. So 25, yeah, we'll go another 25, yep. And that's why monetary policy tends to be like that rather than a sledgehammer of a 100 point cut. Yeah. You know, and so that um, that momentum in economics takes a lot to change. And with this weakness, weakness that's going on right now, right here and now, uh, it's going to take a lot to turn it around. And, and a lot of time as well. And time and a lot of, um, well, change in our behaviour. You know, again, early this week, uh, 
I'll, I'll take a step back for a second. The reason why the economy is so weak now is predominantly from the consumer side, household spending, retail, which is, as we said, is horrible, and a bit of construction, you know, a lot of construction being very weak. That, that's the real weak part. That's going to be the areas of the economy that pick us up out of this slump. You know, so if, if we want to be if we want to be optimistic for one minute and say, look, the economy is going to recover nicely, it'll be us consumers that'll drive it. It always we'll is. We'll either get, I don't know, pay rises or we'll get interest rate relief, these sorts of things will drive that pickup in bottom line GDP and jobs and all those other things. And to that score, earlier this week, um, I think it was the ANZ, not the Westpac, but the ANZ measure of consumer sentiment, down again. Whoa. So the chart, you know, we're talking about the early 90s recession several times on other indicators, on retail spending, on bottom line GDP growth and these sorts of things. The level and the duration, the time that consumer sentiment's been this this pessimistic was last seen, guess when? Early 90s. So another indicator that's got the smell of the early 90s about it, and it's not a good smell. I reckon we've got to look at our chart now because I think everyone knows where we're going, but uh, let's, okay. let's, let's look at the chart. Rightio, look at our uh, infamous we, we uh, might just do a quick, quick hit through on this. We'll run through it really quickly, yeah, yep. Mark. So at Olympic Road Home Loans, we want to do our bit to make a difference and tackle this housing crisis head on. That's why we're putting out a call out to all Australians to join us in helping their mates. Whether they're thinking of getting into the property market or just want answers on their own current mortgage. So refer a friend or a family member who could benefit from a closer look at their home loan options to speak to an expert Yellow Brick Road mortgage broker and you'll both gain an entry to our $40,000 help a mate giveaway. At the end of this campaign, my team and I are going to randomly draw out one of two $20,000 prizes split evenly. That's $10,000 each for the winning referrer and their mate. But if you want to enter by yourself to help out with whatever you like, whether that's your bills, first home deposit, or your mortgage repayments, we've always been here to guide you down the road to home ownership. And now we want to extend that guiding hand to your mates. To enter this giveaway, head to ybr.com.au forward slash mates. Let's spread the word and help our family and mates achieve their dreams of home ownership. Head to ybr.com.au forward slash mates and share yours or your mate's story to both go into the running. And good luck with that. Righto, Kooky, what have we got here? Righto, Mark, here's our infamous monetary policy checklist. GDP, I'm putting that straight over to wheezing. It's weak. We know 0.1 last quarter, 0.9 for the year. Inflation, I'm still putting in neutral to tightening because we're looking at actual inflation, not inflation forecast. So you're talking that it's from the RBA's above point of view? 3%. Yes. So you're not, not talking from our point of view? No. Nope. RBA, if, yep. so if the only thing you're looking at at GDP, you'd cut. If the only thing you're looking at was inflation, you'd probably have a tightening bias, which is what the RBA has. Yep. Labor market, I'm putting that into neutral. We've discussed that a lot. Unemployment's going up. Vacancies are going down. It's not yet a concern. Next week we get numbers, don't we? Next week we get the next number. Yep. My goodness, that's going to be a really, really important indicator of I the think economy. it's on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, yeah. So yep. keep an eye out for that on the ABS, yep. abs.gov.au. So what are we looking for? What what listeners should we be looking for? Is there an, incle- an in increase in unemployment, unemployment? And again, just on that labor market number, this is something that I've had to learn in the last year. Because of this population growth, the employment, because the two critical things in the labour market numbers, employment and unemployment, yep. obviously, if we we have got to create thirty to thirty five thousand jobs per month to keep the unemployment rate steady, such as our increase in population. So if we get say plus fifteen thousand, you might think, oh, that's okay, but there's twenty thousand people who haven't got a job, and the unemployment rate will inevitably tick up. So watch that number. Wages. They're okay. They're not. They're neither. They're the Goldilocks. Neither hot nor cold. Growing it, about three hundred percent. It's under control. It's where yeah. they want to be. And, we, and that wage price spiral that you spoke of is not happening. But wages growth is okay. International economy straight to easing. You mentioned rate cuts in a whole lot of countries. The US is probably going to cut fifty September. in September. Yeah. Probably fifty. They've got a in the US. They've got a hundred points of rate cuts by Christmas. If the US is in trouble, China's easing. You mentioned Europe, UK, you've already cut. Canada's cut twice. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, it's, it's but weak. before you go, our friends in New Zealand still oh. refuse to cut. I know. And, and their economy, 
Their have, unemployment is quite high too. It's, it's got to 4.6, I think, the other day. Yeah, yeah. Um, and their the GDP is definitely in, in a recession, whichever way you measure it, two quarters or whatever. They are far uh, more <laughs> resolute than I would have wanted them to be. They are as tough as can be. Anyway, house prices, we haven't really discussed it. They're, they're moderating. Again, there's a big contrast between Melbourne, which is weak. and But I don't think it affects. It doesn't affect it. So neutral. Uh, yeah. The RBA don't target them, so don't yeah. worry about that. Well, they do talk about it. Retail right. sales, Dreadful. weak. Consumer sentiment, weak as Put those water. ones off the board. I reckon they need to yeah, get off the board. Building approvals, still hovering at 11-year low. You know, and we need to build houses to create uh, accommodation for the population growth. And by the way... Don't forget building approvals are part of GDP. Yeah, yeah. When you're building a house, you need bricks and cement and surveyors and tradies to put in your electricity and timber. The fact that building approvals are dismal is bad for GDP. Yeah, especially, and it does take some time to bake in, though. It does take a while, yes, indeed. A building approval is just an approval. Getting the digger to put the foundations is, <laughs> it takes another Correct. few months. Business investment's okay. Not good, not bad. So that's another one that's okay. Business is spending a lot of money on AI, artificial intelligence. They're investing in you know machine uh, machinery and IT and all that sort of stuff. So business investment is actually okay. Business confidence is okay as well. Oh, no, no, I'm going to move that more towards the slight easing because biz- the NAB business survey is tilted down. It's reflecting the more broad business cycle. Six months ago, it was actually quite resilient. For those of you who looked at our checklist yep. six months ago, we probably had it over here. It's now starting to tilt towards that easing side. Commodity prices, Mark. Did you know? <laughs> you know how the RBA has its own index of commodity prices. I'll just yep. spend a minute on this, which are based on Australian exports. So iron ore has a very high weighting, natural gas, coal, all that sort of stuff. It does not include coffee, whereas other commodities indexes include coffee. We don't just we don't grow any coffee. Our index of commodity prices in Aussie dollar terms has dropped 27% Whoa. from the peak two years ago. That's the weak global economy, the weak Chinese economy. Yeah, commodities alone and our trade surplus has gone from $15 billion a month to $5 billion. We're going to be running a trade deficit soon if that trend That's continues. That's bad. Which, and that was one area. I wouldn't say we're running hot, but that was actually a useful part of our economy. Stock market volatile, I'll put that in neutral, doesn't matter. Current rates, I'm oh, putting that way over in the easing. They are restrictive. They are hurting people. Uh, when you ask people what's the biggest constraint, you know, interest rates are now hurting me. And that's why retail sales are weak, consumer sentiment's weak, building approvals, the international economy, our interest rates are very high. So what do you reckon? So look at that. We've got the, inf- the actual inflation rate, which is, of course, has a higher weighting than most of these other things because that's what the RBA is targeting as well as jobs. That's the problem. We need the next couple of monthly and quarterly inflation numbers to move that back that way. But you look at GDP, you look at international economy, retail sales, consumer sentiment, building approvals, run down this list. We've got, what are that, two, four, six, seven in, in the easing column. We've got five in the neutral column. We've only got one in the neutral to tightening column. We've got nothing saying rates should go up. So if uh, I'll, I'll put one final thing to you, Cookie. I know inflation has like got the most weight on it. I get it. I understand that. That's the way it's been since the mid-90s. Yep. But what if I said this to you? Just the thought, RBA, your job is growth, prosperity, welfare, and now full employment of all Australians or all citizens of Australia, whatever yep. the words are. Yep. So growth is measured by GDP and prosperity is measured by GDP. Uh, um, welfare, one of the ways of measuring welfare is um, when, when we need welfare is what is the cost of living, in other words, what does the standard living look like? What's therefore yeah. inflation? That's one sure. measure. That's how you measure welfare. Yeah. So, measure. so sort of like a real wages. Uh, yeah, yeah. So wages, wages less and infla- welfare, less inflation. Right. Yep. Well, well, wages yep. And, infla- and inflation. So yep. I would say, well, well probably the, the way the the the, the, the uh, sum of those two is probably standard living. But uh, so yeah. so I would yeah, definitely, say definitely. measure your mandate, growth yeah. and prosperity by GDP. Yep. Measure your mandate when it comes to welfare by looking at inflation minus wages. Yep. And measure. Um, uh, the full employment by the unemployment number. Yeah. So I would say today yeah. maybe they should be weighting all of them equal. Those three things equally. Sure. All these other bits and pieces have uh, have an impact on all of them on yeah. every one of and those. They sort of feed back up the chain but, a bit, because yeah. right now our interest rates are remaining. T- uh, our interest rates are remaining high yep. because of just one of the factors. Because of this thing. So yes, and not I that. No, not that. Not that. Not that. No. And, and, and by and I'm saying to you. Yep. 
I think it's about time yes. that we place equal weight on GDP. Oh, no, we place equal weight on growth and prosperity because we want to be a prosperous nation. Yes, we do. We, we, don't. we have we we are, but again, the other way not by is, measuring is GDP it. per capita. Well, then so we're, we're definitely not person because it's fallen for I think six consecutive quarters. Therefore, we're not we're not we're not prosper, prosperous. We're not growing. No. We're not prosperous on a per capita basis. No, and no, I th- we, I th- fact, we, the thing is, we're going backwards. So, That's the thing. So I think there should be more weight on on on, G- on that, that and there should be more weight on labour market. On labour market, and look, and if and they have been mandated on labour market. They've been told full employment, dudes. And Michelle Bullock, when she took the job, when she because when a new governor is appointed and a new treasurer comes in, and that was a, a little over a year ago, September or under a year ago, Michelle Bullock. Uh, with Jim Chalmers said, this is what the RBA is going to achieve. And it was a, it, it, look, it, it, it's sensible that they do that. And it's largely not controversial. You know, we've got to keep the economy strong, all those things that you mentioned. But when they come into the realms of putting in what does that mean, uh, the change that occurred with Michelle Bullock as opposed to Philip Lowe and Jim Chalmers as opposed to Josh Frydenberg, you know, when he was the former treasurer well, several years ago now, is that labour market, the full employment unemployment gets a higher weighting than it used to. It doesn't mean that it wasn't, it was ignored in the days. Of course, they always looked at it. But now, here we are in 2024, the labour market is really important. And I it think has, that's right. because so it should, yes, because jobs are... are but in a modern are, world, yeah. that's how we maintain welfare of the nation. Yep. Everyone's got a job or as many people possibly have got uh, a job, the, okay? If you, if you had full employment, and again, the other thing, Mark, that full employment, this is the thing that somehow sometimes gets me really frustrated. When everyone's got a job, the whole economy's better. Because if you've got a job, as opposed to being unemployed, where unfortunately you're just sitting home looking for a job and you can't find one, that's dreadful. If you've got a job, you turn up to work, you earn an income. When you earn an income, you spend a bit of it. When you spend a bit of it, that shop around the corner does a few more sales. That business does a bit more. Mental health improves. And mental fulfilled. health is massively improved. Families feel better. One of the biggest problems on mental health issues is being unemployed. 100%. You know? And it's a horrible thing. And we know mental health is a, a, a top tier issue, as it should be. You know, we, you know, it's a real problem. Um, so you don't want that unemployment rate to get away from you because it's very hard to bring it back So I'm quickly. calling for a review of the, of the um, indicators in relative to the mandate because I think inflation has got too much weight on it. And I think that's the issue coming out of the last – out of the last um, 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 release, um, yep. press release, yep, and conference, I think that she is needs to take. Uh, this sounds very bombastic of me, but I, th- I would like to see the RBA take a step back, including the treasurer maybe take a step back and have a look. Hang on, these are the three things that are really important to us: welfare, pros- growth, growth, prosperity, welfare, and full employment. That's what yeah. we're really interested in. So maybe we're not going to put rates down right now, but we're definitely going to we're going to start to indicate they're the things we're interested in. And maybe pay more attention to what money markets saying because it looks like money markets are thinking about this stuff more than anybody else. And the money markets are saying, are screaming, unambiguously. You know, and I look at markets every day, every morning. What's the U.S. bond market, stock market done? They are screaming around the world, but also in Australia. I've got to em- emphasize this: They're, they are pricing in the poss- Yeah, the next meeting of the RBA is twenty fourth of September, I think it is. So seven weeks away. They are pricing in. On my last reading, it might have changed in the last 24 hours, about a 20% chance of a rate cut, despite what Michelle Bullock said. Michelle said zero. She said, we are not going to, you know, anyone who's forecasting a rate cut before Christmas is wrong. The markets have said, sorry, RBA Governor, Why would we she are say giving that? it a 20% chance because, ah, this is the other thing. This next six or seven weeks mark is going to be like yeah, a, unbel- a fantastic for me. It's, I it's love it. So important. The Fed will make the US Federal Reserve will make its interest rate decision on the 19th of September. Yep. And as we said, there's, well, a 25-point cut's a certainty. A 50-point cut is probable, possible probable. The RBA meets five days after that. Can you imagine if the Fed's gone 50 basis points with a cut? And, and she- by that time... Our friends in uh, UK would have gone again, Canada probably again, maybe even the Eurozone might have cut again because the European economy is in, in trouble. I can't imagine, and while we don't move in lockstep with all these countries, we are we are our own players, but it would be un- unbelievably unusual if when all these other countries have cut, including the US, five days before, before the RBA meeting, that the governor comes out and says, we have still got a bias to high rates. Mate, we're going to have a great... Six or seven weeks. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Kogi. Thanks, Mark.